Good afternoon. So, um, first of all, let me thank the AATS for the privilege of the floor and of presenting our data from the traffic surgery of the University of Milan about analgesia in trachotomy patients, epidural versus paravertebral technique, a randomized double-blind prospective study. So as you can see, the Lord caused a deep slip to fall upon Adam so that this rib could be removed to create the female of the species. And uh, from this text, uh, this text from the Old Testament seems to prophesy that thoracic surgery would be very painful and would require appropriate and effective treatment. So let's imagine this situation. You are going to perform a thoracotomy. The anesthetist wants to insert a preoperative pre epidural catheter for analgesia. But you are worried about possible complications and you would prefer a paravertebral block. The anesthetist contends that the epidural is the gold standard in pain relief, and so you resolve to check the literature yourself. And you find that the most recent review reports 10 trials with a total of 520 thoracotomy patients, and their conclusions are that paravertebral and epidural analgesia provide comparable pain relief but paravertebra has a better side effect profile and is associated with a reduction in pulmonary complication. But it's remarkable that there were no blinded studies, no prospective trials, different methods of placement were used, and a variability of drug administered. Therefore, our objective was to compare epidural versus paravertebra catheter technique in trachotomy patients but we choose to adopt only the intraoperative one among the available techniques as the blind posterior approach or ultrasound guided posterior approach. We, we decide to analyze pain relief, systemic surgical distress, pulmonary outcomes, side effects, and procedural length using as parameters Vas at rest and at cuff, seric cortisol, fair one, saturation, itching, hypotension, urinary retention, and time from patient access to OR area up to thoracotomy closure hand. Patients were selected based on the following inclusion and exclusion criteria. And the data were analyzed with Man Whitney and student tests for independent variables. Well, the 20, um, 52 patients were randomly allocated by computer-generated randomization to one of the following groups. Group A, with 27 patients who underwent preoperative epidural catheter placement. Three of them were excluded due to wrong placement. The remaining 24 received the following analgesia dosing pattern, fentanyl 0.001% and bupivacaine 0.1%, paracetamol three, three times a day, and tramadol if vas bigger than six. Group B, with 25 patients who underwent intraoperative paravertebral catheter placement. One was excluded due to accidental removal. The remaining 24 received the following analgesia dosing pattern. Naropine, 0.3% in continue, continuous infusion. Paracetamol, three times a day. And <coughs> once again, Toradol, if vast, bigger than six. As you can see in the, the next video, paravertebral catheter intraoperative placement technique consists of very, very simple steps. Extrapleural pocket tunnelization. Catheter positioning under parietal pleura.
needle insertion to the chest wall. Catheter passage into the pleural cavity. And finally, catheter taping on the skin. And as you can see, uh, this placement is a specific surgical task. It's not an anesthetic task. So, um, overall results show that there was a statistical significant difference in favor of group B for every predictive factor considered but steric cortisol. If you look at p-value, cortisol was 0.08. Then we consider the vast tendency and also its punctual analysis. And it was always in favor of group B at 6, 12, 24, 48, and 72 hours after surgery, both at rest and at cuff. At punctual analysis, fair one and saturation, fair one and saturation, were both in favor of group B at 12 and 48 hours after surgery. Considering side effect, we did not record anyone in paravertebral group, whereas in the epithelial group, we recorded this represented here in the picture. Also time from patient access into the OR area up to thoracotomy closure hand was in favor of group B. So according to our data, paravertebral catheter is more effective than epidural in pain control, more effective as concerning respiratory outcomes, better than epidural concerning side effects. Moreover, it, allowed, it allows to save time its placement has not contraindication, and I like to remember spinal anomalies and coagulation disorders, and is not affected by complication. It's also available in conversion to thoracotomy from VATS, and I think that this point is remarkable. We conclude that in thoracotomy patients, in order to provide pain relief, better respiratory outcomes, absence of side effects and complication, paravertebral catheter should be always considered as alternative to a pedural catheter. Thank you.